Hello guys, welcome back. Um, something a little bit of interest today. We're going to, um, you might have remembered a couple of months back, we got a Theraposa Blondie and uh, she went into temporary accommodation while we were jigging around doing all sorts of stuff. So now we're going to put her in into what will be her semi-permanent because she's still a sub-adult. So she's, she's getting on for size now, but this will be big enough for the time being. We'll get a molt or two out of her in this, and then eventually she'll go up into a permanent, permanent home, which will probably be same sort of width, but double the length. So what we're gonna do, as you're probably well aware, that this particular species of spider requires a high humidity. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this up bioactive, and then we will run through the husbandry of this spider. So, in with our clay balls, as usual. Just to give us a nice, nice uh, oh, there goes the lid. So, put our little notch in it to allow the water through. And put that in the corner like that. Right there. And we have our mesh. Remember, this is to uh, separate the soil from the bio balls, the clay balls. Down like so. Now with this particular spider, these these are what we class as a semi semi terrestrial, which means they will burrow down, but as they get older, they spend a little more time up above. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick a decent amount of substrate in. By having a thicker layer of substrate, this will also help out with the humidity. And also as well, another thing to consider when you're keeping heavy spiders like these, they will climb and they will get about. And we don't want them falling any great distance. So we're going to put plenty of substrate in. bits and pieces ready. What we're going to do is pop this in here like so. I'm going to fill that up down there. I'm going to put soil inside this because what we're going to do now we're going to use use this cork tube because as you as you regulars know I'm not a lover of cork tubes. I don't really like them. Well, I've now found a use for them. So we actually don't mind them for this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put a nice ivy in this. Pop that under there. Get rid of that. That's it. Put that crumble down like so. We'll just loosen this up a little bit. I'm hoping this is going to fit in here. Sure, with a little bit of um, little bit of help, it'll go. There we go. Look at that. Looking rather nice. And this is just going to give another dimension to the whole enclosure, but it'll also mean that by having it in the tube we can water it and the water will actually any excess water will go straight down and disappear into the clay balls and that's it that's it we're going to go there there we go 
you know. I think that looks rather nice. Even if I do say so myself. All right then. Now we've got a piece of bark here that we're going to use so we can create a hide for her. Like I say, as these get older, they spend quite a lot of time on the outside, up above. So they're not actually too bad. I think um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little bit more soil. Put a bit more in that corner. And then if she does decide to burrow down in this corner, where the hide is, she'll be able to. We'll put that in there. We're going to add a bit of our beastly material. It's filling up, guys. Right. There we go. Now it's taking a bit of shape. So what we'll do now, we're going to try and make this look as natural as possible. I'll dig that out under there for her as well. In there. Right then, that's not looking too bad, is it? Right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to go with a bit of moss. And we've got a nice, nice array of moss here. Um, I'm thinking the beauty of this stuff is, is you can break it off as and where you want it. So we're going to go with a nice big clump of it up here, run that into that plant. Look at that. Oh, now we're looking something, aren't we? Um, Bit more down here. Oh, this is a different moss. This is a much flatter one. I'll stick a bit of that there. Oh, look at this. It's a little bit, a bit of beastly stuff in there. Just flatten that off a little. We're going to put a bit more in that corner, I think. What have we got here? Um, don't do quite that much. Take a piece off. There we go. Oh, look at this. Now hopefully, by adding all of this moss, we're actually gonna lock in the moisture. Because as you know, with these um, Komodo tanks, They've actually got mesh lids. Now, we'll go into that in a minute because I think it's quite important that we get this ventilation with these guys. Now then, we've got all this lovely moss. Now, where are we gonna put our water bowl? I really don't want it right in the front. I think if I can tuck it in there, what we do, we'll just chop a bit of moss out up there for a minute. I think what I might do in the future is paint these glass water bowls. I think they will look a lot better. Right. That's okay. I hope she likes moss. Right. Here we go. 
What do we think to that? Well, I think that looks half bad. As you can see, we've uh, we've gone quite overboard on the moss and everything else, taking up a little bit of room. Now this surface water that we got on top of the moss here now will soon disperse. This will literally, within about an hour, that will um, cease to be. And that's due purely down to the ventilation of this particular enclosure. It won't take long at all and that will all be dry. Because as we've said in the past, we don't necessarily want a wet enclosure. We want a humid one. So we'll just take up the excess like that. And we can do this. Perfect. Right then. There we have it. Now that should make a nice display. Right then, so here's the girl in question. Now one thing we have to um, consider with the Blondie, the Sturmy and the Apophysis is these are all New World spiders. which basically means they're all hair kickers. So they actually flick urticating hairs up into the atmosphere as a defense. Now with the Blondie and the Sturmy, these are particularly um, irritant. They're uh, what we class as a type three urticating hair. And um, these can make you itch, give you rashes, make you sore. You don't want these in your eyes. And you certainly really don't want to be breathing them in either. So we have to be very, very careful with what we're going to do with her to try and ensure that we don't end up with this, with these airs all up in the atmosphere and all over us. So I shall just get my trusty paintbrush. She is actually underneath her log, and the reason she's gone underneath her log is because we disturbed her. And normally she sits out on top. Now you'll see in here, this is all webbing, this is where she normally sits, is up on here. And it's all this webbing. Now being kept in this, many people keep them in these, but I'm not a lover of them. I don't think they're particularly attractive. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try and lift this up without upsetting her too much. And then we're going to try and transfer her over before she starts kicking hairs everywhere. Now these I've got a turn of speed and they can be quite aggressive. There she is. And there she is. Just absolutely beautiful spider. Now what I'm going to do is take the opportunity now, as she's actually tucked in there, I'm going to get the cricket box down on top of her now, and then we will move her out. By doing the cricket box on top of her now, if she does decide to kick, it will all be inside the box. There you go, she's in. Now 
Now, so far, we managed to do this without any hair kicking. So what we're gonna do now, I'm just gonna try and get this underneath her. Not always the easiest thing to do. And hopefully, There we go, nice and gentle. You really don't want no hair kicking. If we can get it to walk up gently without having a fit, here we go. Nice and gently does it. Start laying her flat now so she feels comfortable. She's in. And there you go. I don't know if you can see that. As you can see, she's just purely a sub-adult at the moment. I think what we'll do is we'll get her into the into the new enclosure. And so far, we've managed no hairs. What we're going to do now is we're going to lay her flat to the floor. Get your leg out, girl. Snap it out of the way. And now we're going to try and lift this up nice and gently. She's holding on. Come on, girl, let go. Very gently does it. And there we go. Try not to spook her now. And we managed to do that without any hair kicking whatsoever. Which is quite an achievement. Can I move that round? She is an absolutely stunning spider. She looks rather attractive in that new enclosure. Now then, husbandry-wise with these guys, we're, um, they do require a really high humidity. And this is one of the reasons that we put her into this, this deep enclosure like this. Um, and this will lock in the water. And what we will do over the next day or two is we will we'll add a water layer to the bottom of these bio balls so that there is a permanent reservoir of water there and this will slowly the heat in the room will draw that up through the enclosure and keep that humidity that we require because she does need around about 80 to 90 percent humidity otherwise these guys have an awful trouble molting out so as they get larger they have more and more trouble they need that moisture more so when they're young, they're not quite so bad. Now, um, we spoke about the urticating hairs. These can be a real serious problem. So if you are prone to them, take precautions, wear perhaps gloves, maybe even a face mask if, it's, if it causes you problems like that. Now, the other thing to do with these is, this is a La Blondie, the, um, the Sturmy, which we will be doing a rehouse of shortly. Um, they differ, if you come and have a look at this, on the front legs, if you look on her front legs, they're very, very hairy. And with the Sturmy, they lack the hairs on the front legs. They've almost got like a, a board. They've, they've not got the furry appearance that the Blondie has. And the Apophysis is even furrier than her. So... That's an idea, that's one way of you can check to make sure that you've got the actual, the, the proper species that you've been sold. Because unfortunately, a lot of blondies are sold and they're Sturmies. So the Sturmy is in fact, if you like, the cheaper version. So um, make sure you're getting what you pay for. Now food wise, these guys have got an absolutely enormous appetite and they will eat forever. They will literally just eat and eat and eat. 
So be careful how much you're giving them. As much as it is fun to see them feed, because they are absolutely fascinating feeders, they really, really go to town when it comes to food, you, you must try and limit their food. And as you can see with her, her abdomen is just a little tiny bit bigger than her carapace, which is around about where we need to be. We don't really want her with a huge, massive, great big abdomen hanging on behind her. So that's one of the things. Now, heat-wise, there seems to be a little bit of contradiction with this. Um, most of the time, people have kept these in, in the high 80s, um, sort of like 85 or so. Uh, this is because where these guys come from, they're coming from tropical South America, Brazil, French Guyana, Venezuela, and they come from the, um, the rainforests there. Now, where it is very, very warm, up in the 30 degree mark. So, it stands to reason that people keep these at high temperatures. Now, one of the things is, in the wild state, these guys are in the bottom of the floor. They're a terrestrial spider, they don't climb. So they're down there in the shade, in the coolness. It's not 30 degrees on the floor. So, there is some, some contradiction as to, whether the, as to whether we're keeping these guys too warm. Now, there is literature to say that we should be keeping them around about the high 60s to mid 70s, which is quite an interesting thought, bearing in mind that we've been keeping them much, much warmer. So I'm going to try that with these. I'm going to keep this one and my Sturmy. I'm going to keep them on the end of the shelf, near the cooler end of the room, and see whether it makes any difference. Um, and we will just uh, follow the progress. Now, um, Another malt, and this girl will be ready to breed, and that's the aim with, within getting her, was to actually breed her. So um, one more malt, and then we should be there, and we'll be looking for a male. Uh, they're not the easiest things to breed, but um, I, think they're, I think they're definitely going to be a challenge worth trying. Definitely. Now then, so if you're into your, um, your big, big spiders, she does get up to around about, I think, as a general rule, females around about 10 inch leg span. It is documented that they reach 12 inches. I think 12 inches is an exceptional one. 10 inches is a bit more than norm. So uh, if you've got anything around 10 inches, you should be more than proud. So um, it will keep, you know, that's the sort of sizes you'll be, you'll be looking at getting with, with your uh, blondies. Now, I think that about covers them, really. And um, yeah, if you've got the room for one, give it a go. Bearing in mind that it will get bigger and as she reaches full maturity, she will need something twice the length of this, and that will be about big enough to, to maintain her. She'll be okay in that. But um, yeah, just something to bear in mind if you do, do add one to your collection. Right then, I think we just about covered that. I hope you enjoyed it. A nice simple little makeover, and I think that looks rather smart. She's, she's very settled, isn't she? She must like moss as much as we do. <laughs> Okay then, right, so don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spiders, and I'll see you soon guys.